So we're talking about large ships and we're talking about multi-crew and different people have different takes, obviously. The reason why I'm so excited about the way that CIG was tackling it is the very specific example that they gave when they were talking about the engineer has to go fix like the oxygen bottle, right? And there's, you know, Dave Colson didn't really know how that was going to work or whatnot. They haven't really defined that, but they were talking about the idea of having to leave a workstation and go to somewhere in the ship and repair a critical component. Now, why am I so excited about it? Because think about that situation. All of a sudden, you're in a large ship. Let's say you are in a Caterpillar. You're out smuggling goods and you've got your friends with you on the ship. Let's say it's fully loaded with weevil eggs, you know, the gasping weevil eggs or whatever. You're out, you're on a mission, you're smuggling, and then you come under attack. Nine tails, players, whatever, doesn't matter. Your ship gets damaged. And let's say a critical component, a shield coil is failing. You got to get those shields back up. You got to get those shields back up right now. But the problem is, is that coil has failed. Now the person who knows how to do that, the person who has the rights to do that is the chief engineer. So the chief engineer leaves the chief engineer's panel where they're managing the ship's power systems and things like that and has to go and physically repair this item. Then come back and start managing the ship's power levels and doing whatever. But if you have two people and you can loosely define that role, like let's say one person is in charge of ship security, but can also do item repairs and things like that. And you can define your own roles and you can be very, you know, just everybody has a little bit of everything or you can be very strict. You can do it the way you want to do it. You can customize it to what you feel is appropriate. And so all of a sudden, instead of the chief engineer leaving that engineering post, possibly at a critical moment and offloading power management and ship management duties onto a different, you know, onto a different crew member, or onto the ship's captain while they go to take care of this, they can assign that to it and say, hey, go fix that shield power coil at, you know, junction five. And the, that person goes and does it while the engineer is still there managing the overall engineer's job. When you start to realistically think about these combat situations that you're going to be in, they're not going to be neat and tidy. They're not going to be defined by a script. And that's one of the things that you really have to understand. When you watch sci-fi television shows, Star Trek, Star Wars, you know, whatever, movies, you know, obviously, um, all of that is defined by a script. Everything that every person does is defined by a script. So, of course, that person is going to have the skills to do it. Of course, that person is going to have just enough time to get there and fix that thing. And they're going to know exactly how to do it. But doing these things real time in a real universe defined by rules is a little bit different than what you see on screen. And so the fact that CIG is kind of breaking this open and saying, here it is, we're basically giving you the building blocks and we're letting you construct based on your experience and what you feel is most important. I think that, you know, by doing that, it shows a lot of smarts. It shows a lot of, okay, you know what? This is, a, this is something that we just can't define by ourselves. This is something that we have to figure out you know we have to let the players figure it out for themselves we can't just go in there and say this is the system this is how it works sorry deal with it that approach has been used in the past whether it be ship design or the rules of the game and really hasn't worked out all that well letting players define it within certain parameters i think is the way to go and so when they're talking about this that's why i get excited because it's like okay that's that's a smart choice because every ship is unique and not only is every all the different ships like a caterpillar is unique compared to a constellation but every crew is unique in terms of how many are npcs how many are players you know, and that can that can be fluid as well. The situation changes. You wake up and you've got insomnia at three o'clock in the morning and you decide to make some cargo runs. No one else is online. You might have to change things up to allow for an entirely NPC crew. Whereas, you know, maybe at a prime time Saturday game, you know, when you're playing with your friends, that, you know, that might be an entirely you know, human being crew and not an AI crew. At that point, 
you might use an entirely different rule set. And that's kind of where CIG is showing their smarts. Right now, when we're in these ships and we're flying them around, we're flying very we're just basically we're flying big fighters with an interior that's really all that we're doing a lot of these added functionalities that we're supposed to get from these cavernous interior spaces are just not there sure i can walk over to engineering in my caterpillar but i don't need to because there's no functionality really there. There's nothing that I really need to do over there. I don't have to repair anything. I don't have to change anything. I don't have to adjust anything from there. There's nothing that I can't do from the pilot seat that I, you know, that I can do in engineering. There's no reason to be there, but in the future there is going to be a reason to be there. And so that I think is, you know, it's it's an important difference to acknowledge that when you're experiencing the ships in the game right now, you're experiencing very bare bones and you know, we get used to it. You know, this is basically, this has been how the Caterpillar has worked since 2016, you know, question mark. I believe that's the date. This is basically how the Caterpillar has functioned. So, you know, we're used to this and you know, this is basically how it should be to us but you have to realize that as we travel through the ship and you can actually <laughs> you can see a little my ocd kicking in it's like no no I've got to stack those more neatly that's that's not right but um you can um you can start to appreciate the fact that we've gotten so accustomed to the ships being simple that we start to expect that this is the way that it's going to be and that's not the way it's going to be uh, these big ships that we're flying around in, yeah, you, people say, oh, I come in a retaliator, one torpedo, boom, I blow up your caterpillar, blah, blah, blah. That's not the way it's going to be as the game evolves. Once we get the proper finished versions of our ships with armor, with component add-ons for ship components, you know, the sub-components and all that stuff. And once we're able to make all these adjustments on the fly, to all these systems and we're once these ships become much more than just the skeleton that we have but the full living breathing organism that they are going to be mechanical organism but you know what i mean once they become that fully fleshed out beast they're going to be a lot different and cig kind of saying hey we're going to let you just define this for yourselves depending on the situation the crew size, the ship, all of that, you get to define it based on what you feel is the best, I think is just absolutely a fantastic idea. And I know some people are probably like, I don't know why you're so excited about this, but it shows tremendous foresight and it, and it doesn't force you to adhere to a rigid system. It allows you to create the system. And for immersion's sake, there's also a little bit of that there, you know, there's, you know, and allowing a crew to kind of define the roles and saying this person does engineering, but they also do security or this person does security, but they're also the assistant engineer. That's the way I want it to work out, you know, based on, you know, whether it's a player, whether it's an NPC, it's a fantastic idea. And that's why I got very excited about it. And yes, I did watch the full video. Thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow, please follow, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.